Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to make a woven pico flower. So get ready to weave a lot of petals. I'm using a wool applique one circle and I'm covering it in woven picots to make a little flower. The first video that I shot showing how I begin, I thought I had hit the record button only to find that I had not. So I'm gonna cover a couple of the things that I spoke about in that first video right now before we get started. One of the things is where you position your first petal. Do you start from the inside and work out or do you start from the outside and work in? I've done both and they both have their own challenges and their own benefits. And I've talked about both of these different ways of working within the video. On this particular flower, I started to work from the outside going in because I had a specific one inch circle and I wanted to make sure that the petals didn't go too far out from beyond that one inch. So I began on the outer edge and then worked my way in. Where I positioned the first petal, it makes no difference. I just randomly chose a spot and started. And that's where the first video begins. It'll begin on the second petal. I used a combination of two threads, Sue Spargo's variegated Eleganza thread in a couple of different colors, as well as Silk and Pearl also in a few different colors. And I kind of switch in bet between those two thread types. I'm using a chenille number 24 needle the entire time, and I'm anchoring each pico with a very slim needle, a Milner's needle. Now you can use a pin. It doesn't really matter. What you want is something that is quite slim so that you're, when you tighten it, you can avoid getting that big loop at the tip of each petal. And having a thinner anchoring, whether it's a pin or a needle, will certainly help you with that. One last thing I meant to mention, I have a stitching book that I'm trying to start. I haven't even begun it. I've just been doing research on how to. If anyone has information on or knows how to make such a book, I would love to hear any help I can get at this point. Don't forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, the bell for email notifications, and I love hearing from you, so leave me comments in the comments section. If you haven't done so already, I'd love for you to come along with me on my blog. I blog Tuesdays and Thursdays where art and life meet, and I'm on Instagram at, and my name, Ariane Zersher. Grab something to stitch with, grab a needle and some thread, and let's start stitching that Pico flower. For my next petal, I'm bringing it right up to the side of this one. If it overlaps a little, that's fine. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't all have to be uniform. This is the critical part right here, where I'm pulling this enough to get it snug against here, and then this first the first couple weaves are the ones that are going to determine whether you get that loop. I mean, this is when it all happens. So I'm going to pull this and I'm going to pull it hard. And now I'm going to come back to weave through. And then I'm pulling through and pushing that up hard. And I'm pulling this across. Okay, so I can tell already that I'm going to want a layer underneath these because I'm going to want something here. So what I can do is I can do that. I'm going to use my anchor here, like that. And I'm going to go into the middle of this one. And then I'm going to come up in the middle of those two and come up right here. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to wrap that around. And I'm going to pull this across. Okay. I'm pull it, pushing up on that needle, pulling it. 
pushing up hard pulling this I'm going to come up push that as far as I can weave that back in it starts getting hard to weave in and out I'm going to pull this needle out but I'm not I'm not there yet sometimes I just have to keep twisting the fabric up and down back and forth and that's okay whatever gets the job done okay, okay so I'm going to pull this out. I don't want all of the bottom leaves to be this color, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to maybe put one of these, this color, the lighter one down here. But I wanted you to see how I do that. I'm working in, but every now and then you may find that you need to squeeze something in underneath. And then you just pull everything back and you, and you get it in there. See how this one is sort of veering over? I'm going to put this one right over it. It'll be fine. The deal is with this, it doesn't really matter. I'm pulling that really tight now because I want this to be pointy. I'm pulling this much, much tighter. I don't know if you can see, but because these are so tiny. I may also move to my silken pearl and do some inner, you know, start scattering some inner silk and pearl in there because it's a different look it's got a shine to it it also is a bit thicker it's between an eight and a five really can you see how this is already how skinny it is this one got a little well that's just kind of funky looking but that's okay looks like someone chewed on it oh and i've stopped pulling tightly so i'm letting it move i'm letting it expand i'm letting it get bigger as i go down kind of manipulating the shape is um not something you need to worry about in the beginning you know just try to get the pico looking okay before you start trying to worry about the shape of the petal and all of that I'm anchor it right there and remember, I'm gonna have another layer under here. So I'm pulling those petals back. I'm going back in here. My anchoring needle is gonna go right in the middle. It's down, pulling it pretty tight. I'm going to continue doing this other layer behind these other petals because it's much harder to do this layer and then go back than it is to start here. And I'm gonna Bring this up. I pull it pretty tightly. And this is that critical time when I really pull hard on my needle and thread, pushing that up as hard as I can in the beginning so that I mitigate the threat of that dreaded loop at the end, at the tip. So sometimes I have to switch this around and I also sometimes have to take this needle out and pull this away from the background so that I can keep weaving. And as I get closer to the end here, I just keep pushing my needle up to make these woven strands push them together as much as I can. And I'm going to end it right here. I'm going to keep doing my outer edge here, and then I'm going to do this inner circle here, and then I'm going to keep going inside. So I'm just cooking along here. Um, I wanted to show this. I'm mixing it up. So what I've got going on is I've got my three variegated eleganzas. This is a 31, 26, I believe, and 27. Oh, and my easy one, uh, easy M81. Then I've got these four, um, Antique Roses, Summer Spritzer, Blood Moon Rising. There's no rhyme or reason here. I'm randomly, so I've got two of the orange uh, Silk and Pearl. I've got a couple Eleganzas. I'm totally mixing it up. And the reason I do this is because I don't want it all to be uniform. I want it to look organic. I am doing one more on this last row but as you can see here I have overlapped it 
with this petal. And I wanted you to see that just because I think people think, oh, it, you know, if I do something like that, that's somehow wrong or it's not going to work. It, it's going to work. Whatever you do, it's going it, to, you can make it work. So you can overlap, you can, they can abut, they can be apart, whatever you, you can, you can, you can do whatever you want. So, and it's the same with, do you do a rounded petal? Do you do a pointed petal? If you want a flower that's uh, uh, all pointed petals, then you just, then you do that. If you want them sort of random, which is what I'm going for, then you just sometimes pull them really tightly in the beginning to get that point. And then sometimes you relax it so it's more rounded. This one I'm not pulling very tightly. I'm kind of doing a, a somewhat pointed uh, tip. But this one, I wanted it pointy. So I did that. I pulled all of them. This one, I didn't want it pointy at all. So it's kind of rounded. And you just think about that as you're weaving and then do what's going to accomplish what you're wanting it to look like. So if you want it to be more rounded, you have to be aware of how much you're pointing, you're pulling it in with each weave. If you want it to be pointed, you have to pull it much tighter, especially at the beginning, and then loosen the tightness just a little, relax it a little as you go out, but still keeping it tighter than you would if you were doing a more rounded petal. I'm going to go in the center of this one and the center of this one with the middle coming here. And that's how I'm going to do it all the way around. I'm just going to stagger them. So I'm going to get my anchoring pin here and I'm going to go right up within this petal. I just press it down. It doesn't matter. And that's where I'm going to have my next petal like that. Now, the one thing is it's really hard and you need to be super aware of it is you don't want to catch your needle into the petal below. One way to um, ensure that that doesn't happen often is by putting your needle down at the base here and then pulling it up so that you're not actually weaving over that petal. You're actually weaving down here at the base and then pushing that thread up and that'll help. I'm just going to keep going. I keep staggering my petals. They don't need to be perfectly in the center. They can start going off a little just as long as they're sort of staggered. And I'm going to put that down right there. And then I'm going to pull this through. Another thing that you need to be aware of is when you are doing this, you need to try to make a straight line here where you're anchoring your thread. Because if you do it not straight, it's going to be harder to weave. If you do a straight line, it'll make it much easier to weave. And what I mean by that is that these emerging threads are all on the same line. You know, this isn't somehow here, this one's up here, this one's here. Because as I weave and I get closer to the bottom, it helps me to have that straight line. I also want to make sure that I'm really pushing hard against the edge there so that my weave is pretty dense. And you can see I've got the three layers. This is my fourth layer now of uh, petals. And I just keep doing what I've been doing. I'm not really paying attention to staggering the petals so much anymore because I'm just, as the circle gets smaller, it's going to do whatever it does and I'm not going to worry about it. So this petal is staggered, but this one's pretty much on top of this one. It doesn't bother me one way or the other. I'm not worrying about it. What I am concentrating on is making sure that these emerging threads are lined up in a line to help me. And I'm anchoring my needles so that my, um, to ensure the length of my petals. I want the length to, to be somewhat consistent in that I don't want one petal to suddenly shoot off out 
of the realm of what the others are doing. So I'm keeping these fairly short. I didn't want this flower to be huge. And um, I mean, this is a, a small circle and I don't want this flower to sort of take over the whole piece, even though it will, you'll see, it's going to draw attention to itself. Just so both ways of doing this, whether you start from the inside or whether you start on the outside, both ways have their drawbacks. The difficult part about doing it this way, where you start on the outside and move inward, is that you're having to, you know, the anchor needle, you're having to go over other petals and just pin it directly into them. You're also having to cope with not putting your needle into the petals below, which is challenging for sure. So I think that's those are the biggest drawbacks is that it, it's hard to not poke into the petals. It's possible, I'm doing it, but it's, it is hard. And it's hard to, as you get closer, especially, and you have more and more layers, to anchor your pin in where you want it because you're really having to just basically anchor it into layers of petals and that's a little tricky however if you start from the inside and move out you're dealing with petals and the more you move outward the more petals you have that are getting in your way i've done now both ways and i don't know that i care like one over the other uh, they both have their pitfalls. I think the takeaway is, is that doing a flower like this that's covered in petals is challenging, but the result can be pretty fabulous. Now, one thing I like about doing from the outside going in is that the petals just uh, lay flat and lay this way, so I'm not having to push them and manipulate them one way or another. They're just doing what they do and I'm working around them. Whereas when I'm working on the inside and I'm creating petals out, I'm having to constantly manipulate those petals so that they're out of my way. And I usually pin them. I'm doing these inside petals, I think with Eleganza EZM26. So I'm nearing my end here. I've got probably room for three or four more, and then that's going to be it. So as I get, as the space in here gets tighter, it obviously gets harder. One thing I have to keep doing is weaving from the bottom, moving up and pushing that needle up against the anchoring needle so that my weave is consistently dense. And I'm going to do one more of this magenta and then I may change the color completely for that, for the just the three that I'm going to do on the inside here. I was going to do something totally different, but when I started looking at other things, it seemed like this was actually the best one. So I'm going to just do that. And I'm going to come across this way. And I'm going to take my anchoring needle and put it there. final one that I'm going to be able to squeeze in here. And I'm already thinking that I might do, I had originally thought I was going to do these three petals in like a bright yellow, but now I'm thinking that maybe I'll do a couple of drizzle stitches in the very center and that will be 
the either a bright yellow or maybe a purple or a blue, I don't know, something. So I will finish this petal and then we'll, I'll figure out what I'm doing in that very, very center. Okay, and then I think I'll just go down. Well, there's my woven pico flower. I'm going to go ahead and use this number eight weight EZM and I can't read it. I'm going to do a number three Milner's needle. I'm thinking I do if this works. It's what I'm doing. I've actually never seen this done, but I'm curious to know if it'll work. Instead of doing a drizzle, I'm just pretending it's a drizzle, but I'm doing as I would a bouillon, wrapping around. And then I'm going to rethread this. Now I could put a bead on it. That would be pretty. I think I'm going to leave this as is for now and just see if this even works. Because it may not. And I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to use my handy pliers here. And there it is. So that did work. Okay. Um, so that's just a like a, a bouillon, but you have to be careful not to pull it or you um, pull it right through and unravel the whole thing. So I'm going to do three of these. So there's one. And I have no idea how many wraps I did. Okay, so that's 32. And I'm going to rethread it. The tricky part is holding it while you pull it through. That's the tricky part. And making sure that thread comes up to the tip. There. Okay, I think I just made up another stitch. I'll do this one. That's the third one. This is the tricky part with this, is pulling it through so that you still get it to do that, but you don't have the whole thing collapse in on yourself, and you also make sure those wraps are still holding up. So there is my Pico flower. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching it and don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, click on that bell for email notifications and I love hearing from you so leave me comments in the comments section. Don't forget to check out the description section where I leave links for everything that I've used in this video and um and I created a new stitch, which is really exciting and fun, a bouillon drizzle. So yeah, I'm very pleased. Until next time, here's to exploring and creating together.